What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Young Thug record, Beautiful Thugger Girls, out this past Friday, June 16th. Young Thug's singing album, as it's being referred to and has been referred to by the man himself, it's interesting how this is a guy who is so fucking prolific that we basically come to expect like minimum three releases a year from him, and yet there's so much buzz behind this particular one. Even though we know later in 2017 we're gonna get another mixtape, another collaborative mixtape, probably another album project, I don't even know what we call them anymore. But hey, when you are mostly thought of as a rapper, in Thucker's case an eccentric and versatile one, sure, but a rapper, and you refer to your new album as a singing album, and on top of that, your album cover is eerily reminiscent of Lil Wayne's disastrous rock album Rebirth, it's gonna get people talking. Especially because this dude has been on fire lately. Whether it was last year's widely celebrated project Jeffrey, a lot of people saw that as one of his best works, or it's his big time feature output as of late. He's collaborated with everybody from Calvin Harris to Rick Ross. Or it's this slow and steady snowball of critical acclaim that Young Thug has started to see, even from reluctant listeners who may not enjoy or even get his music, but acknowledge that he really has ushered in this sort of post-verbal hip-hop. Because let's face it, the way that Thugger just takes the English language and slaps it around is undeniably interesting and entertaining. Everything about the guy, whether it's his lyrics or his clothing choices or his off-the-wall vocal inflections, it's all very unorthodox. And for me as a music fan, unorthodox is always exciting. Unorthodox is how things move forward. It's how things evolve. Am I in love with everything the guy has done? No. Have I been intrigued the whole way? Yes. Did I enjoy Jeffrey last year? Yes, I did. And it's precisely that whole weirdness that Young Thug embodies that made this project not all that unexpected to me or tough for me to digest. Approaching this, I was like, yeah, this is a dude who likes to be wildly creative and try different shit and be as weird as possible in the process, and here he is carrying on doing it. I wasn't as taken aback by the idea of Young Thug making a singing album as it seems like a lot of other people were. And the first thing I'll point out about this project is that it's not that outlandish most of the time. Like I remember on my Facebook timeline, like a few hours after the album came out, one of my Facebook friends wrote something like, new Young Thug country crossover album is terrible. And that's actually pretty off base because when you go through this track list, the album as a whole is not that ridiculous of a departure. There are a few moments where Young Thug does take his sound into completely new, uncharted territory. Like the song Me or Us, which is one of my least favorites. It's this nightmarish fusion of, like, like, like imagine Young Thug and Death Cab for Cutie's I Will Follow You Into the Dark colliding in some terrible tragic accident. It is painful for me to listen to. One wild experiment that works well though is the song For Y'all, which brings with it a bit of a Latin flavor, complete with a horn section and some syncopated acoustic guitars. It's bouncy, it's upbeat, it's just a lot of fun. Actually this weekend, uh, a bunch of my friends and I are going away for a much needed vacation. And of course, during the marathon drinking session portion of it, I'm in charge of the playlist. And actually a bunch of people have been hitting me up saying that new Young Thug song for y'all, like put that on there. And so it must be something. It must not just be me that likes this song. I think just cause it's goofy. I think it's just the idea of Young Thug in a Latin setting. It's just fucking fun. But other than a few of these more extreme outliers, Young Thug's transition into mostly singing his lyrics feels like a logical progression, honestly. Because I'm already used to this guy's vocal delivery being a bit eyebrow raising, so it's not that odd just to hear him sing. Like, hearing Young Thug sing is not as weird as some of the noises that he made on Jeffrey. Like on that song Riri where he sounds like some fucking tortured wild animal. Especially because he proves on this album that in the midst of all this quirkiness, he does have this twisted sense of melody that when applied in the right context is razor sharp. Tracks like Take Care and Tomorrow Till Infinity, She Wanna Party, for y'all, which I already mentioned, the common denominator in all these excellent songs is that Young Thug brings some very catchy, well put together hooks. Like you could take a lot of his vocals, even though there is a lot of a lot of uh, studio wizardry on them, you could take a lot of his vocals, just play them on the piano, and they sound like songs. Maybe he is known for lyrical gibberish, 
but this album is not melodic gibberish. And sure, it does help a lot that Young Thug has such tuneful instrumentals to work with on this album. Producers like Judge, who provides a real perky, addictive beat on the song Take Care, which might be my favorite song. Wheezy gives him a real sparkling backdrop on the song You Said. There's a lot that's already here. There's already a solid foundation with the production on this album, but still, I am so impressed with Young Thug's melodic sensibilities. In some cases, he's taking cues from the melodies that are in the beats, and in some cases, he really is going off on his own. And as usual, I love how elastic his voice is. Like, he just does so much with his vocal delivery in these tracks. Whether it's a soft touch on a song like Get High, in which he pulls off a great smoking song, and Snoop Dogg's guest verse on there, he fucking murders it, but I digress. So whether it's a more mellowed out tone like that, or he's going into that hilarious, low, absurd voice in the opening track, Family Don't Matter, or he's doing his voice crack thing in the song You Said, I just continued to enjoy Young Thug's range of voices and inflections. Seriously though, contrast Young Thug with some of my favorite MCs like Fabulous or Jada or Crooked Eye or Cool G Rap who I just reviewed. These guys all have more or less one delivery. So it's a really interesting experience to listen to somebody who has like a thousand. And yeah, as I mentioned, I thought Snoop Dogg crushed his appearance on Get High, but of course the big collaboration on here is with Future on the song Relationship. And Future, it's one of the best things I've ever heard him do is this song. The two of them have so much chemistry with the way they trade vocals. And I love how in the hook, I just love the way the syllables kind of roll out of Future. Like, I'm in a relationship. I just think that that arrangement, that little burst of syllables is what makes this hook and this song really pop. One thing that's unusual for me here as a listener is that I tend to get pretty turned off by excessively crude, vulgar, or, or lowbrow sexual references when there's too many of them on an album. Like even on NWA's second album, there's a lot on there that just really starts to sour me on the music because it's just, it's just too much. But for some reason, I, like, usually I can't stand that shit, but for some reason I find Young Thug hilarious. Lots of references on here to not wearing a condom, great life choices. Lots of references to female genitalia. The funniest one has to be when he says, uh, menage a trois on my face. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That's not to say that over 50 minutes of shit like that and not much else in the way of topics I can connect with that's not to say it's an entirely good thing. And that's something that's always pushed me away a bit with Young Thug Project is personally, I just need something I can grasp onto. And with Young Thug, there's usually not much there other than sexual innuendos. But the real Achilles heel of this project, unfortunately, is just the filler. A song like You Said, which I know I had praised the beat earlier, but the album really loses momentum with that song because it feels like it should be over at like the three minute mark and it just drags for almost another two. The song On Fire is anticlimactic as hell. Really don't like that one. I mentioned Me or Us being a low point for me. And there's the dance hall type track, Do You Love Me, which, oh, come on. This dance hall thing's gotta stop. I can't fucking stand it. I couldn't stand it when Drake did it. I couldn't stand when Travis Scott did it. I couldn't stand when Zara Larson did it. Young Thug trying it is no different. Maybe it's just not in my blood to have an affinity for these types of grooves. Because every time I hear them, it's just like someone's yanking all my limbs out of their sockets. So what we have here is a bunch of great songs that get bogged down by the spotty tracks around them. And when I say great songs, I mean it, which is why I've spent most of this review speaking positively. And actually, like on my first few listens of this record, I anticipated giving it a very positive review. But just the more I listened, the more the holes started to show as I listened to it in sequence. Here's the thing. If Young Thug had kept this project to a tight 10 tracks like he did with Jeffrey, this would be by far my favorite project of his period. And we'd be talking about probably putting this on one of my mid-year lists that I have coming up. You know what? Let's make an ideal track list. If the track list just had, in no particular order, Take Care, Family Don't Matter, Tomorrow Till Infinity, Relationship, Get High, For Y'all, She Want a Party, Oh yeah, I'll give to you as well, and Daddy's Birthday, let's say Feel It for the 10th track. If that's the track list, this is a very different review. Imagine how sick this album would be with just those 10 tracks, cutting out the four subpar ones that just get in your way. But unfortunately, I'm reviewing what was released, so as much as I am loving 
a big chunk of this album, it's not consistent. Not as consistent as what I would have liked. So I would recommend to everybody to give the highlights of this record a listen, but I can't make a wholehearted endorsement of the entire thing. What I can say is that this was an exciting, adventurous record from a fearless, innovative artist who hip hop purists and old school heads might not really vibe with, but at this point are forced to acknowledge his significance. Again, an abundance of great melodies and great songs on here. Some of my favorite songs right now, period, are on this record. People who are bashing this album, I can confidently argue are off base. People who are completely dick riding it, I can only agree with you to an extent. Beautiful Fucker Girls gets a 7 out of 10 from me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.